Now here finally in this last video on the chapter, I wanted to discuss something that although we have already touched on earlier in the first video, but it needs a little more attention. And that thing is the fact that, you know, when businesses are dealing with all the stakeholders together, and we discuss that how a simple decision, any one decision that a business might take in its own interest, right? We might have all the right thinking, all the right reasoning behind the decision that they're taking. But that particular decision will have multiple impacts on multiple stakeholders. And the thing is that some of those will be taken positively, will be positive impacts, and some of them will be negative impacts on stakeholders. And we've already discussed that negatively impacting a stakeholder would mean the stakeholders will not do their part for the business. And that's not really something that is useful for a business in the long term. So the very fundamental problem in dealing with stakeholders is that there will definitely be conflicts between multiple stakeholders at any one given point in time. And when I say that, I mean any decision that a business takes, any particular situation where they have to look even in their own interest or in one or two particular stakeholders' interest, they try to take the best decision. The other words may be negatively impacted and that's where the problem will occur. So we're just gonna look at three different, very different scenarios here and then try to establish that what sort of conflicts might uh, appear when you're dealing with different stakeholders. Starting with changes in the economic environment, okay? Which is all external to a business. Remember, business does not control the economy of the country. There are things such as inflation, unemployment, exchange rate, all those things are phenomena that the government and all the businesses and the consumers together help to create, but no one business is in charge of deciding the economy of a business. Now, let's say, again, we can take an example of uh, the COVID situation here that suddenly uh, all the shops had to close down, uh, all the, everybody had to stay home firstly because obviously because of the pandemic, which meant that nobody was really going into the stores anymore. People had to, the companies had to move to online selling and the buyers had to move to buying things online. So the requirement for a lot of things went down for a business. And some of the people who were negatively impacted by this whole situation were obviously the workers. Well, people who were relying on their jobs for a livelihood would not have, did not certainly have one. So they will struggle there. Yes, the business would have taken the decision in the best interest of the owners because if you stay open and you're not selling, you're not selling any products, that means you're incurring the cost and no sales are coming in. It means your owners or your shareholders are gonna suffer a bigger loss if the business stays operational. So you're trying to take this decision in the interest of the owners and trying to impact that positively and somehow retain the money that they made. But at the same time, your suppliers aren't happy because they can't supply, even their stores were shut in a recession situation, even they won't have the money to supply, so they're also getting impacted by the whole situation. So if a company decides to close down, you know that the workers, suppliers, and even the customers would be impacted negatively because no more choice for them. So that's something that we saw in the, the COVID period and now we're seeing that recovery that some of the businesses are coming back. But during that situation, a business may be forced to close down some of its location, which yes, is in the interest of the business, it's in the interest of the owners, but there are definitely negative impacts on some of the stakeholders and all stakeholders are equally important for a business. So it's, it's a very difficult place to be when you're a business in such a situation. Um, secondly, let's talk about automation. And autom automation basically means when you bring in more robots, more capital intensive production methods, and that automatically means that you're replacing labor with robots. So again, your workers are negatively impacted. Now, I want you to understand here that this decision that the business is taking is purely in the interest of the business, right? The more automated you are, perhaps better technology will lead to better quality, more output, all those things come in the decision that the business is taking and therefore it's done positively. Like the intention is definitely positive, but the negative impact is surely on the workers. And of course, the shareholders will be happy because that would mean that 
their sales will go up. The banks are happy because if you go to buy machines, you're gonna need money. And where's that money gonna come from? Of course, the banks may lend it to them. So the banks would be interested in knowing who wants this machinery. So different situation, but the problem is still the same. Some are impacted negatively, some are impacted positively. And let's look at another one. Let's say a business decides to expand its operations or maybe simply relocate its head office. Okay, we're going to a new place, so uh, we've become too big. This small business, this small building doesn't do it for us anymore, so we may have to look for a new branch. And when that happens, there is good news for the workers. Some of them may be getting promoted, moving to a new place, new job opportunities come up, but during that whole process, the, there's gonna be certain disruption caused which will impact the community or the society negatively. Right? Perhaps pollution, uh, drilling sound, dumping of waste, and all that is unappreciated by the people living around the business. So they are definitely negatively impacted by the whole situation. Of course, who is also positively impacted? It's your customers. A okay, new branch, bigger branch, perhaps that's something they've been waiting for for a long time, so they are looking at this very, very positively. But if you think about it, large businesses, and we discussed this in the third chapter together, that large businesses find it difficult to speak to the customers directly or take feedback from them. So in a way, customers will also feel that a bigger business, not probably one that will give me the personalized service that I'm looking for. So again, the customers may be impacted negatively by that situation. Okay, now, the whole idea on this side is to understand that there will be conflicts. It's not something that can be avoided. You can uh, brush under a rug. You will have to face these situations of business head on. And what you do in such situations is, of course, first of all, don't panic. Secondly, you've got to establish who is the more important customer in that particular situation. Then deliberate. Think about what are the pros and cons of the decisions that I'm taking. And if you end up with more pros and cons, then surely that's the way forward. And remember that it's never easy to make all your stakeholders happy with one decision. It's just won't, it just won't happen. So take it case by case, situation by situation, and see how things transpire and make sure that most of your stakeholders can be happy at different times, which means they will keep coming back to the business and the business will keep running smoothly.